Do you need to add charts to your websites, applications, reports, and anywhere else? Let's discover QuickChart, an image API to generate dynamic charts without having to load and configure complex libraries. Before diving into the platform overview, let's see the different options available to use it. First, you can use the shared community version available at quickchart.io. As it is on shared servers, the latency might vary based on the current traffic, but it might be enough based on your usage. If you use it personally to generate charts from time to time, go with it. If you plan to embed dynamic charts in your apps, I'd recommend you have it hosted separately. You can use their cloud version with a professional license or self-deploy it on your own server. You can also use our platform LSTO to take care of the installation, backups and updates. To install QuickChart with our platform, you can go to ls.io, hit login, deploy my first service, search for QuickChart, select, choose your cloud provider, your region and your service plan to adjust the number of CPU and RAM you need, hit next. Adjust your level of support and hit Create Service. Once your instance is created, you will see it in your list of services and receive an email to notify you. Access to the admin UI by clicking on it. Click on Display Web UI to get access to the link of your instance. If you go to it, it's just an API endpoint, so you won't see anything from it. To get started, we can follow their guide on their documentation. They explain us that it's using a Shard.js configuration to define the different parameters to render the images of our chart. You have that example there with a bar type, the different data and label. And what they explain us is you use the URL of your API and you pass the C parameter to add the configuration directly as a URL parameter. Let's open this link and we have our image generated automatically. On their documentation, they are showing us the cloud URL. So it's the shared one, so you will have the same performance as others. Instead, let's use the instance we created. Go here, copy the URL, and in our address bar, we replace it with our API URL. Enter. And we have our image generated, but this time it's on our instance. This is a good starting point. If you want to get further with this, you can follow the getting started guide and go into every details here. For now, let's stick to it and let's see the different chart types available. We have the bar chart, line graph, radar chart, pie chart. The list is pretty long and we have one chart to display any kind of data. Let's jump to the progress bars one and we will try to use it inside an application to show you how it can be beneficial to an app without having to install a whole library. Let's create a React app. We'll be using Yarn, create Vit. Our project name, it will be Demo Quick Chart. We'll be using React without TypeScript. And let's open the folder. We can run Yarn and Yarn Dev, then access the URL. Okay, so we have our starter pack from Vit and React. We have a count that is increasing when we click on it. Let's replace this display with a progress bar showing the number of clicks. Everything is happening here in the app. We have the count. The button is here. Maybe we can display our chart just above it. Let's go back to the documentation. We can copy the progress bar here, paste it here. Instead of using 50, we will replace it with our account number. And we don't want to use the CDN address. So let's replace it with our address. Now we can save. And we have our progress bar displaying the number of count. And when we click, it's updated automatically while it's just calling the API, rendering an image. Of course, it's an example. It's not meant to do that. It's more meant to display graph and data. But the UI doesn't look so good because the resolution, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a bit pixelated and the height is too big. Let's adjust it. To know what additional parameter we can add to customize it, go to edit this example. And we have here a different chart URL with a width and a height. Can go to chart settings to update it. Let's say we want 1200 as a width, so it's way bigger. So let's take it. And for the height, we want it to be very thin. Let's use 42. You can see it's width is equal to and h is equal to. 
let's update it. So what we need to do is W is equal to 1200 and H is equal to 42. And C, we keep our default parameters. But now we have an issue with our progress bar because it's going out of its container. But this is an HTML CSS issue. Go to style with is equal to 100%. And now we have our progress bar with the nice resolution and nice size. But to edit the data dynamically using React, this syntax is not very easy to modify it here within. Instead, we can copy paste the part on the left, which correspond to what is in the C variable here. So we replace everything with, we will name it chart settings. And what we will do is const chart settings is equal to json.stringify will pass our object. We replace 50 by the count. We save it and now it's still working, but the data are coming from a proper JS object in React. So the image is generate. You can do open image in a new tab. You can of course download it. So save image save as a PDF or embed inside your browser like we did, but you can even use it inside your email or inside Google spreadsheet. You have all those information inside the documentation to show you how to do it. You can create your chart manually by looking at the different types in the chart, looking at the documentation and fine tuning it to your needs. But you can also browse the chart gallery, which contains a lot of ready to use templates you can use inside your projects. When you open one of them, it's opening the sandbox like the one we used just before. So we can just copy it, replace our chart settings. We might need to replace the height here. And you have a chart ready to use in your project. They also provide another editor. It's not chart gallery, but it's chart maker. It's a different tool to create charts. So you define all the data and data sets visually. It's not by editing the settings, but it generates the settings for you compared to what we see before. And it even have an AI assistant to help us create a chart. Let's try area of number of purchase over time by category. Hit generate and it's crazy what it generated. We have the different categories. So of course we will need to rename them to, to fit our project. But you have across the different months, so the time and the category, you have the number of sales. And you have a nice representation of them all together. If you want to use the chart that you have generated with Chart Maker, this from here is only usable using the cloud version. So what you will need is either you can download it directly, but you will need to save it as a template. Then you can directly use the URL. But instead, if you want to use it in your project, you can go to advanced, export chart to full editor, and it's showing you the traditional way you can copy paste inside your project. Quick chart is not only meant to build chart, but it can also generate QR code because it generates images and it's a useful API. You can use it if you need to. It has nice parameters. You can add images over it or even connect it to Google Analytics and have stats on when your QR code was displayed and opened. Of course, as always, if you have interest in this product, I recommend you to have a look at the documentation to see all the different aspects we didn't cover together. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Quick Chart with us and we'll give it a try. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to not miss our upcoming platform overviews. If you want to continue discovering great free tools with us, I recommend you this video here.